harmfulness of the opioids. Oh, wow. So, and they were pushing the doctors to use them and write more scripts and giving them incentives through these trips out of town and across the world, you know, overseas. And, you know, they would take them wow. on these conventions, the, the pharmaceutical companies, of course. Yeah. But they had the data that said this is highly addictive and all this other stuff. They said, like, oh, yeah, we're just going to water that down. Don't worry about that. Wow. You know, let, we're talking about price points here. Mm -hmm. what's, what's, what's in the margin? Mm -hmm. How can we make this profit? Well, well, it's, you know, some of them, you know, natural selection and they die off anyway. Mm -hmm. matter, you know? But now it's hitting white, middle aged suburbia. So now we have a problem. So now we want to go and rehabilitate. Yes. And, and not, not incarcerate. Not, incarcerate. Yeah. Exactly. not incarcerate, of course. It's a lot of people of course that not. should be exonerated from the crimes they did and Absolutely. been paid mm -hmm. from the, for United States of America because mm -hmm. you thought crack and cocaine and, and mm -hmm. marijuana was a. a a, a 10 to 20 one. life fe mm -hmm. felony mm -hmm. instead of um, re rehabilitating mm -hmm. them and or instead of um, getting helping them, therapy, them. yeah, them getting help. some help, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you decided that jail would be the best place, prison would be the best place because you wanted them to do your labor, mm -hmm. slave work. Mm -hmm. True, true, absolutely. So that's <laughs> what else because we, we started getting socio political, yeah. yeah. Okay. I know, right? I hey, Ricky, you. how you doing? <laughs> Ricky's on as well. Um, so I know you guys hearing us talk about all this political things and stuff, <laughs> but sometimes we got to go there, you know, because it, 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 it still us. it affects us, you know, because some us. funding, you know, goes <laughs> where the funding, where the money goes. We need to know. But that's another thing, though, yeah. because of the opioids. Mm -hmm. Why aren't they teaching us or giving us coping mm -hmm. mechanisms, mechanisms yes. that are not? narcotic related yes mm -hmm. in terms of relaxation techniques mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. breathing techniques mm -hmm. and things or visualization something that will be non-narcotic to help us from within exactly the, for help you from the inside sure. out because mm -hmm. when you're in a crisis like when in the, in the beginning stages like everything hurts and you just want to just stop true but sometimes though i noticed like my dad used to tell me when i was a kid whatever would distract you like if it was a cartoon. Or yeah, I game. I do that. I don't know. I watch TV and try to keep my mind off the pain. Right. Because you're not focusing. Yeah. You're focusing your energy elsewhere. And then they think you're not that much in pain if you start right. focusing. But you're yep. like, if I don't focus on this and I start focusing back on the, it, it's 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 right because you take yeah. you can only take so much medicine before yeah. you OD. Like that's crazy. Exactly. Yeah. You know, before your respiratory system shuts down, and then next thing you know, you know how many people have slipped away because yeah. they've just over medicated yeah and they don't tell you over all right we had a show that one of the parents told us that you know their child was over medicated mm -hmm. and that's, my, that's my, how they passed away and I, I clearly believe i know full heartedly my uncle god bless his he would have been uh, 16 years since he passed this month was his birthday on the 8th of january i think he would have been he didn't make it to 33 so he would have been in his um, late 40s, almost 50 now. But um, he was always sick, always sick. And they always wanted, he, he had a medicine that he liked, the Demerol. Mm -hmm. Thank God that it's not really on the market as, as it is now. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they very, very, trust me, mm -hmm. when I had my hip replacement, Demerol was still on, on the market. And I saw myself getting a little bit of too much wanting it. Mm -hmm. And I said, no. And I was in pain. Like, let me tell you something. I have been cut from the rooted to the tooted. That pain is real. Mm -hmm. But I know what was realer, that medicine. And I said, no, I didn't want it. Mm -hmm. And they were bringing me Percocets. And I hate Percocets. Mm -hmm. I don't see how y'all rappers it's like and everybody pop work. Percocet. Mm -hmm. Why? Like, that makes me, so, that medicine I know me. all that stuff. Y'all saying that. I'm making my stomach like, oh, God. I, no, not even sick. I puke. <laughs> like, that is a nasty <laughs> medicine. Like, yeah. it does not agree with me at all. Mm -hmm. Like, and they were bringing me that. Mm -hmm. um, it was working. I had to take it because I didn't want to really take anything stronger. But, um, and then, then me getting out of the hospital, going to rehab, they would give me Percocets. And I'm trying to work out. And they done gave me a, a Percocet mm -hmm. before I work out. And I started sweating and feeling all type of ways. Oh I don't like those feelings. I don't like feeling like that. Mm -hmm. I don't even like, when I was in the hospital, I was on the Demoral, not, not Demoral, um, Delighted. And I started hallucinating. Oh, wow. And I don't have a brother. I told the nurse my brother's coming. I have one sister. That's mm -hmm. it. 
And I told the nurse, um, my brother's coming to visit. And then the nurse came like an hour later. She said, your brother's still coming. I said, what? She's like, you told me your brother's coming. I said, listen, do me a favor. Do not bring me any more medicine unless I ask you. They would, they had me on the, on the table, on the mm -hmm. timetable. Like they would bring it every two hours, you know, mm -hmm. really continuously, right? continuously wow. because I was in so much pain and I had to pump the PC pump too. Oh, wow. And I said, I don't want, I'm not pumping. Mm -hmm. I'm not using that medicine. I'm going to sleep this medicine off. Don't bring me nothing else. I have to sleep this off because I don't have a brother and that. That woke me up. I was like, no, you have to be conscious yeah, you at all to, times because how much medicine medicines you take will in? have you crazy. Yeah. All type of things slipping in and out of comas you don't even know you're in. Yeah. I, I had vertigo from dilaudid. Wow. When I, I was in, um, I had a, well, I was in mm -hmm. a crisis and they, they gave it to me and the room started spinning. The mm. bed started spinning. Wow. I was like, what the heck is this? I, I was crying. I was talking to my mom. I was like, make it stop. But everything was just like, <sighs> and I know I'm not going anywhere. Nothing is moving. Mm -hmm. But it's in just, my mind, it had, you dizzy. Yep. it had me going in circles. And with that Demerol, mm -hmm. my mom made the doctors at Miami Children's mm -hmm. take me off Demerol when mm -hmm. I was a child. Mm -hmm. Because I remember literally being like maybe i don't know between eight and ten and something in my mind said you need medicine wow and i was like what i'm sitting here playing having a good time just doing my thing we need medicine you only get medicine when you go to the hospital exactly mm -hmm. i don't want to go to the hospital because you're a little kid you don't want to get stuck that means yeah. you have to go through this whole process yeah. of this mm -hmm. and that. I don't want to go. So I just went to my mom and my dad and I was like bawling about it. And she was like, oh, no, we have to fix this right now. Mm -hmm. She already getting my hooked. Child, hooked. Get to, hooked to, yeah. addicted to medicine. Yeah. You know, so that's when we transitioned from the Demerol to the morphine. Mm -hmm. But and how that, does that do you? The morphine works. But I mm -hmm. just feel that over time. Mm -hmm. Because you're getting more adjusted, you're yeah. gonna have to take more like, stronger. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting to the point now where it's, and I guess maybe I feel it's a lot for me, but it may not be for somebody else. Yeah. But it's like between like eight, mm -hmm. you know, milligrams. When you mm -hmm. Oh no! Huh? Oh no, no! No! Yeah. So yeah, it's high. Yeah, that's high. Because you I'm might have to take it, something else. I'm yeah. gonna have to find something else. Yeah. Because I'm a, I'm a tiny person. Yeah. You know? I don't even know how you could take that. that oh, means... yeah. That's not, I'm like, what? I used to walk. It's like, okay. And what's next? Yeah. But then my mom would tell me, or my dad would tell me, I'm having a conversation. Like, we're talking now. And then, you know how this is when you have yeah. the medicine and you have mm -hmm. the medicated conversation. Oh, yeah. Sure, sure. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've, so, I've, like I was saying, like mm -hmm. yeah, what happened? And you don't know that you just missed 20 minutes of a full conversation, <laughs> of a full conversation with a nap. Yeah. I want to I tell my sister and my friends who be texting me, no one, I be sick. I, I just I got my medication. They love to play with me like that. <laughs> I'll be in the middle of a text. Mm -hmm. Sleep. And by the time I wake up, I know it says JJFFFF, whatever. I just text. And they're like, what? I'm like, y'all know I just took this medicine. Why would y'all do that to me? <laughs> And then you don't make you miss you wake up like you never missed a beat. You know, I finished my conversation. And be like, so we we're talking about, oh yeah, that was right. And then keep it moving. Mm -hmm. But you can't take all this medicine all the time. It's not good. And yeah. I don't think that parents and physicians or medical community encourages us to have alternatives. Or, true, true. Or even, um, oh, you know, treatment. saying that like, I, I don't know if she's on, but you just saying that, uh, Dr. Simone, if you're watching, if you're not, um, I'm mentioning this because she, I just spoke to her and she said she's doing, she's writing, uh, I don't know, uh, I think, uh, not a book, a guide. I, yeah, I think it's a guide. And she said, because she said a lot of, um, the sickle cell community patients, sickle cell patients, we go quickly to wanting medicines instead of trying the all the alternative um ways before we get the medicine and so she's creating a guide and then she's also creating the guide to steps of of how to take the medicines because a lot of yeah and and i said you know that's good because of, that's what's happening a lot of the commute uh, you know a lot of us you know who 
I mean, I, I take, I mean, for me, I, I, the medicines is like the last resort for me. It's, I, it's <laughs> honestly. Last for all of us, but I notice with me, if I don't. Well, no, not for all. For a lot of them, they, 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 they that take medicine. that, they take that medicine. And, um, I, and to, to me, you know, I rather soak in some hot water, you know, so, you know, Relax. I put the massager on, you know, put some oils on, pray fast, girl, whatever I gotta do. It's true, go. because you don't want to yeah. go to the hospital because you know yeah. it's a whole situation it's yeah. gonna take production yeah. yes oh. you know, and trying yeah. to get ready the, the <laughs> Ricky you he know said, what he said no I need some man <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Ricky, Ricky. but it's still hard like, when you're living in a crisis you have to get up and try to take a shower yeah. and, and get dressed to go to the hospital and put on your good pajamas Cause you can't go looking raggedy, cause mm-hmm. then they're tripping up and all you a hobo looking for drugs. Yeah, so you got to like you know look like you just got ready. You gotta get dressed like you're going to the prom or something. Yeah, <laughs> with your <sister. laughs> I feel you. It's true because, for, especially for women, they think we really like yeah. you know. Yeah, What's up, and Rick, on Instagram, we see. You. Yeah, yeah, and Ricky said, Ricky said, hot water don't work for. Okay, we get it, yeah, guys. Hot guys. water don't yeah. work for you guys. So I get that, but, but you can like get a massage the from the woman or whatever, you know, something. something. But that, yeah, that's what the hot water is really for. But I noticed that if you don't tackle that that mm-hmm. first initial ache mm-hmm. with some meds to mm-hmm. kind of like bring that edge off, mm-hmm. you are gonna make it worse. You make it worse, and that's the that's the absolute opposite of what you're trying to do. Because I mm-hmm. I fought, and my mom's like, "Why you gotta go to the hospital?" I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I know. I'll be crying too. Cool. That's her. That was it. Last uh, in December, I was in. Listen, I was in a hospital. I was in hospital pain, but I wasn't going. I was not going. I told myself, "You ain't going to no hospital. You need to get it together." <laughs> I told. Him, I had my mama to put a, a chair in the shower. Mm-hmm. You that's true. Uh huh. Listen, I was not. And I repeat, going to the hospital. I already had my one doctor, I mean, hospital visit for the year. That was it. It was no more. <laughs> and that's the thing. You have to find things. Because I noticed with me. Lixen just came on. Hi, Lixen. Hi, Lixen. Mm-hmm. The stress level is what triggers a lot of my crises. You know, sometimes when you're dealing with your family or your friends or just life in general, work or whatever. But when everything is at like maybe between an 8 and a 10, it's like, oh, hey, remember me? <laughs> crisis. Let's have a good time. <laughs> Ricky says, "I'm back." <laughs> Ricky says, he "Say you can try to be cool and fight the pain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then once you get to the point, to the time to get to the hospital, that's when the problem starts. And no, it gets worse. Like you have to tell the people at the hospital you ain't take no medicine at home. You have to like be like, I am yeah, I, my last leg. Please save me. Say, like, ask you, like, hello, um, Nella Bella. We see you. How are you doing?" Um, like, listen, when I go to the hospital, I have to take something before I leave. But you can't but tell me. I don't, t- I do not. Mm. Because guess what? Y'all gonna make me wait a whole, whole yes. six hours and you try to st- stick me like a million times. And I mm-hmm. tell you, don't stick me there. There's no vein there. You don't believe me. Like, listen, I know my body lady. I'm 37. <laughs> I know how old. Links and say How many times I've been stuck there. There's like no it. vein. <laughs> yeah. Um, tell us one, how do you, since we're talking about coping me- mechanisms, how do you cope with you know when you're having a crisis? What do you what is your what is your alternatives or your what do you go to to yeah. you know help fight the pain? It depends on what type of crisis it is. Like you know if it's like a little mini one, like it's like a more of an achy type mm-hmm. thing. You take some medicine, you rest, you get that heating pad. My heating pad is the truth. I love my heating pad. It's, heating it's amazing. Heating pad is the truth. So, Amazon, it's amazing. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, so also go ahead. And <laughs> yeah. Lots of fluids, even though it seems like between three and five mm-hmm. a.m. Mm-hmm. is the bathroom. Yes. Lord. Oh yeah, I know. I I, mean, I hate the IVs and stuff that keep making you go. Oh, but it's between three and five a.m. You gotta go the most. Like, you have to go the most, and that that's when you're trying to get your rest, right? <laughs> and then between three and five a.m. is also for bottomy time. Heck, this is something too, but I'm gonna <laughs> tell you. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, and I used to tell people, like, do you realize I just went, I, I just got, I just got to sleep. sleep. Yes. Yeah, about and five come, minutes. <laughs> and you have come here, now you want to stick a metal object in my body. Well, we need the blood. Well, you need to go. Come back later. 
You want to see me not be in the best of moods. Exactly. You know, I'm trying to be decent. That's kind of why I love and like getting a pig line or something because the nurses can get the blood access. Out of mm-hmm. Yes. And when they come, I love to tell them that I, I, I'll talk to my nurse. You don't out of here. You're not gonna, you're not about to stick me. Oh, but they, I said, listen, you see what this is? This means you don't have to stick me. Well, my nurse can get the blood. Bye. <laughs> Uh, Hector said, "I can't see the first comment, but he was he st- he was basically saying that it's up to each patient. It's true, you know, everybody is different. But we, what we're trying to tell everybody out there, he said, you know, you know, each patient know how much medicine they need. You know, some patients do need the meds, and we get that. We understand. You know, everybody's different. But we just saying, you know, sometimes like slow down on the pills if you can. You know, and I know Hector agreed with me than that." You know, if you can slow down on the pills, try to. I don't know what you're saying right now. <laughs> and Lix is a <laughs> middle of the night. Oh, it's brutal. <laughs> yeah. It's brutal. And, you know, I used to have, I'd be cool with my nurses. I'd be like, oh, y'all want to come in and try? <laughs> I need somebody to talk to at 3 o'clock in the morning because I, I can't go to sleep. So <laughs> you chart and I'll check. <laughs> <laughs> Well, being a female and having sickle cell, um, do you find it difficult, you know, when you're going through maybe your monthly or, you know, just by being a woman alone, do you find it more difficult that you're going through sickle cell? I do in terms of, um, a lot of it's social. Okay. You know, because you miss out on a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when you're not in the mix, you, you know, you kind of miss out on what's happening because you're you're not there but you know also you have true friends who know Mm -hmm. what your situation is and yeah they're they're your ride or dies Mm -hmm. um true challenges possibly um if you're single dating is a bit of an issue yes Mm -hmm. because um you know having a chronic illness a lot of people are like oh well this isn't too much for me and blah 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 Mm-hmm. You know, so you want to try to get rid of those deadbeats early on. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, other than that, I don't know. I guess just being a woman in general is difficult. So what's one more, you know, situation? You know? Mm-hmm. It just makes you a little bit more awesome. More awesome. Okay. Can mm-hmm. you tell me, like, one of the main stories that, one of the main things has affected you with sickle cell? In terms of? Like what? What? Like you know, some of us, some 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 sickle cell patients have had strokes. Mm. Some have had hip replacements. Some has had you know just different things. You know, uh, uh, blood clots. What is something that has a struggle with a you? Do it as sick as, as your story. A couple of years ago, I had to come to the um, realization that I needed to get a port. Mm-hmm. I got sick back to back like it seemed like every two months I was going to the hospital this one particular year Mm -hmm. so at the end I had just really bad crises and they were like listen we've come to the end of the road it's time I was like what do you mean like it's you you have to get a port I went to the doctor to have them draw blood and had a panic attack at the phlebotomist wow because I was like, they're going to stick me. I don't have any veins. And the anxiety, I literally had a meltdown. So my doctor's like, listen, you can't keep going to this. So I get the port and I had to go through their struggle of, should I get the port? Should I not get the port? Get the port. Get the port. So I got the port and that's when the depression hit. Because now I'm ugly. I can't wear shirts like I used to. I can't. I feel unpretty. Mm-hmm. You know? Now, wow, if I have deep. to date somebody, I have to, it's, I, I already, okay, as a kid, I had to have a spleen, spleenectomy, cholecystectomy, appendectomy, and like oh, wow. times, spleen, gallbladder, appendix. I used to tell people they were running a three for one sale. So I told them, I was like, oh yeah, my parents got a discount. They had a three for one that day. They were running three, three for one surgery. So I have a scar, and this was back before they were. Oh like, yeah, I can imagine. Best. Oh, you know, I can so imagine. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I got, I got the Frankenstein thing mm-hmm. going in the middle. So now I have the port, 
So now I'm hideous. Oh no, you're mind. not in your mind. Wow. You know, so mm -hmm. I had to struggle with that. I had to go through um and black black people do go to therapy. Mm -hmm. I had to go talk to a therapist about it because mm -hmm. I was feeling away. Mm -hmm. Um every now and again I still feel away because that's something if mm -hmm. you as a as a, an adult woman mm -hmm. and if you're trying to be in a relationship with an adult man, mm -hmm. there's at some point you're going to have to have your clothes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it real. I'm just saying, but like I haven't got to that point where I have to go and explain, you know, but mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. you keep that in the back of your mind. Yeah, I got you. you. Know? I so, you. And these days, unfortunately, chivalry is on life support. So, it's yeah, like, you know, know, dudes are not always mm -hmm. very accommodating. So, you, you keep that type of stuff in the back of your mind where it's real deep. Like, okay, well, am I hideous to them? You know, I know I'm going to be hideous to me because it's just like, you know, self. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God, you know. Yeah. And if you find somebody, it's like, oh, girl, please, ain't nobody got time for that. You know, yeah. you know, that's not what this is about. This is about me hanging out with you. That's yeah. Like, you know? yeah. But when they, you look but, forward to having an understanding partner yeah. Yeah. in that situation. But, mm -hmm. Those are the type of things that people don't really say out we loud. struggle with, you know. This is so deep, Maya. Surgery, I'm hearing, yeah. You know, you have scars. You and see, you saying you that, I I understand. Yeah. I don't know how, if your scars is big. Really? Yeah. Right. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't even wear my short shorts no see? more because yeah. it's on my hip. You know, so yeah. we go through these things as well. And women. see, see, in those who are out there who is listening, Facebook, you know, this is very deep. You know, this is very, very deep. You know, because we talk about the pain, but there's some things that we don't get to talk about. And I really feel you on about the scar because I have a humongous scar on my leg, on my mm -hmm. left leg. Mm -hmm. And I had that when I was nine years old. I had osmianitis. Wait, salmonella osmianitis, right? I'm not saying that word right. Yeah. Anyways, and you tell me i had also had surgery here too but um but this was uh what to me to me right yeah to me because you know as a kid you can't you gonna wear shorts and so you know the shirt you could cover but this oh kizzy said it was that yes, see, exactly. you know and you so like um um you, conscious you, yeah you're self-conscious self -conscious and you so you heard about it mm -hmm. and you're like and you, you, they make you feel like an outsider, you know? You know, like you're like yeah. a kid or something. Yeah, and so this is so deep, you know. And so people who are out there, you got to understand, sickle cell patients not only go through pain and go through uh, um, medication, medication struggles, struggles the stigmas, staff. but we also go through those surgeries that or scars, scars oh, from because okay. our bones and our bones mess up on us and and self esteem and stuff. Yes, and my, my biggest so thing it's is like the, a the whole, ulcers on my legs. Like, yeah, Hector just said he didn't wear, wear yeah wear my um, legs out. You know, my that was like one of my pride and joys to show my legs mm. because I have, I have pretty legs. Mm. But now that the ulcers are on both sides of the ankles, like on front, on the inside, and on the outside, mm. I can't even wear my heels like I want to wear them. But you know, I wear them every now and again because of the replacement. Mm. But or to even wear like sandals or something, like I have to wear. I try to cover them up. Because I can't always wear concealer or makeup on mm -hmm. the things because they, I don't want them to act up or flare up again because mm -hmm. something different is on the leg, you know? So mm -hmm. it's weird. Like, it's crazy. And, and as a woman, like, yeah. you, you already struggle with society making you feel a way you're supposed to look like this and wear these type of yeah. things and yeah. things like that. So now I'm self conscious about the type of style cut yes, you from my dress. But you know what? I'm going to tell you this much. I, as a kid, even as an adult, I start to, but I don't want you to be that way. You're very beautiful. I'm just going to say you? that. And I'm going to say, you know what? Because I'm married. Because I'm married. Now, now I'm going to talk a little bit real. Because I'm married. Mm -hmm. I've been with my husband now going to be 19 years. Congratulations. Yes. And I'm, I'm closely, I'm, she actually older than me about a month, right? But two. Yeah. So we're the same age, right? Okay, so I'm just going to keep it real. By me allowing him to see my scars before we got married, because, you know, he knew me, you know? Right. What I'm saying, I understand you don't want everybody to always know, but the, yeah, I get that. But for those of you who do have the port and for those of you who have scars, you know, that's like in places that's very noticeable, mm -hmm. you know, 
if you are going to get in a relationship, let them see it before, you know, you start going to the next level because you can see it in their face if they can handle it or not, that's you know. And so that's what I'm going to just tell you, ladies or men, you know, let them see it before they get a little more deep with you because then you'll know if, if they the, can if they can hang or if they're yeah, worthy of being, being around you. Yeah. Exactly. You know, yeah. So. Don't 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 hide it. Don't you know, I don't think you do that, but I'm just saying, yeah. you know. I'm just, just saying that that's, that was a struggle. That I get I had that. I, 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 I had that too. Yeah. You know, because when, and then especially when I was going through that whole healing process, like nobody can prepare you. <laughs> Forget you, Ricky. I'm sorry. What did he say? He said you're oldest. What did he say? <laughs> I'm not going to say it. You're older than me, so you need to stop. <laughs> oh, he's trying to call you old. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I just got married young. I got married at 20. So oh, I started God. young. So I started. That's why we've been married a long time. You're older than me, Ricky. Don't forget. So you're older. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. yeah. It's hard. You know, you want to be able to do certain things or wear certain clothes or do, mm -hmm. certain, you know. Yeah. So that was my struggle. With yeah. Single -single, having to go through that and that healing process and everything. So mm -hmm. I used to just look at it and cry. Like, this is horrible. You know, but now I'm just like, yeah, you know, whatever, you know, it is what it is. So. That's true. Um, all right, we're gonna ask you to just uh, tell everybody. This is the last mm -hmm. message you could give to them. Mm -hmm. Um, when it comes to doctors, nurses, just family in general, when it comes to your support system, um, just tell everyone what you would like to go further um or further going what would you like to hear more about when it comes to sickle cell and advocacy um what would you like to be heard heard about sickle cell in the near future in terms of telling the public or yeah telling telling the public, what do you want dealing, to know dealing with yeah. this and yeah. telling with or, staff everything yeah. okay um going forward i would like there to be more awareness on treatment and protocol of, of patients, you know, in terms of how to do the intake process for sickle cell patients and getting them stabilized with mm -hmm. an amount of medication that will handle their initial pain and step them down. Mm -hmm. I would also like there to be more funding for advocacy and research within the sickle cell community. And I would like to have the medical community and caregivers encourage patients to find other alternatives that are non-narcotic so that we don't have this stigma of being drug seekers. So we don't have this label of being addicts and, and people who are just there for the medicine and not there for the actual purpose, which is what most of us are there for, which is treatment so that we can be better and get back to our regular lives. Exactly. There needs to be more awareness so that we have a better quality of life as we transition from pediatric to adulthood to hopefully more of us are seniors. Yes. You know, in geriatric, mm -hmm. which there's not a lot of information for adult sickle cell patients and there's not enough information for geriatric sickle cell patients because this is a new territory within the last 20 years people are living longer yes. and having more vibrant lives and, and, and fighting as warriors to, to be here longer, you know, and not slipping away at, you know, in early, late teens, early twenties anymore, you know? So mm -hmm. I just want us to be awesome, man. And, and, awesome. and get what we're deserving of, exactly. you know, mm -hmm. in terms of funding, research mm -hmm. and, and care overall. Mm -hmm. We deserve this and we're no different than anybody else. So we have to advocate for ourselves as patients and have our caregivers advocate for us as well. But I also hope national, you know, and other organizations are starting to see the value of who we are as people, you True. know, going forward. So, hey, let's keep kicking ass, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <It's> beep. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> We want to thank everybody for um, listening to our show today, yeah. for watching our live on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. And um, we want to 
Each other just sponsors. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like she said, we want to thank everybody for coming in. Um, Hector did say announcements. He said that, that he has um, his golden line is going to be, be um, at Dillfield before 10 p.m. I'm not sure. Check out his page so you can find out more. Um, Hector, oh, but for Facebook, I think it's, uh, well, it's um, Hector Jimenez. Yeah, but it's maybe on um, on the Instagram. Instagram is, um, is the, the sickle, sickle cell. cell. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, the, the sickle the, with a D. D. Yeah. The yeah, cell. yeah, yeah, sickle cell. Yeah. Um, for, for all of you who are tuned in, we thank you so much for watching. Um, I just want to, um, make sure you guys know that, um, this is a, um, a show that does pay. So if you guys would like to be a sponsor, a partner, we have some things on our website that you can check out. You can be a partner for only $10 a month that'll help us keep going. Um, or 25 or 40, which you'll also get a t-shirt. If you um, help us as a partner, we also have um, ways for you to just donate on our GoFundMe. Um, what else am I missing? Um, oh, um, and and you can buy a shirt. Um, but the shirt really goes to our Saving Sick of Cell Live. So, um, but please, um, that also helps um, with Saving Sick of Cell Lives for those the children who live in Haiti. So please, um, there's so many things on our website. You can go check out and see how you can be a part of Tiana if you're still on. Um, did I say her name right? Tiana uh, Washington. Yeah. Mm. Um, we want, I see you've been you know, joining in since last week. Mm -hmm. um, we would love to hear your story. We would love to hear your story. Mm -hmm. If you please DM me. My name is on Facebook. It's Corlez Dillette. Naomi's name is uh, mm -hmm. Naomi um, Pygett. Pygett on Facebook. Or you can just, I think our, link, our page has a, a message board as well. Yes. You can send us a message and we'll answer through there. Mm -hmm. Or if you have us on Instagram, send us a DM. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't have any of those uh, messengers or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Our email is at um, fighting through our pain TV at gmail.com. Yes. And we'll be glad to respond back to you. It's, yes. it's a, it's a pro protocol to have you to come on the show. You have to um, sign a couple of release forms for us, but mm -hmm. we don't mind hearing your story. Mm -hmm. We actually love to hear your story. Yeah. So, and for those of you on Instagram and Facebook, if you would like to tell your story on our show, if you live in the Miami Dade area, and you would like this, or you live in Florida and you know you're coming down to Miami or you wherever you may be, it was on Instagram and you're coming to Miami, you actually want to be here, you know, DMS will send you some information. We also bring in those who do want to tell their story from abroad. We bring you in on a live feed and there's, like she said, there's protocols. We love to hear your story because we want the world to know your story. We want the, the, uh, the world to know that what we go through. Um, as sickle cell patients. So thank yes. you for tuning in. All right, thank you for listening. Yes, and thank you, Mike, for coming in. And we appreciate thank you. Having you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> um, and this is Fighting Through Our Pain TV. Again, I am Corlez. And I'm Naomi. And thank you for tuning in. Please stay tuned for the next show. Stay healthy, Warriors. Yes. yes.